Generative Consulting is um, a three-day course in April. Um, and what we're going to do is find out a little bit about Robert. We already know something about him, but I think it seems a good idea to, um, yeah, just, sorry, I thought I was sharing a slide then, but I didn't quite manage it, it doesn't matter. Um, so why don't we begin by simply, if, I think some of you may know Robert from his work in NLP, uh, but what you may not know is that um, I actually got to know Robert mainly through uh, the kind of his business side. So about 20 years ago, he did a course called Success Factor Modeling, which I attended in London. And at that time, I was a very stressed businessman running my own sort of small business, um, not really being able to work out where I was going, except trying to just sort of cope with the day to day. And I came on Success Factor Modeling and found it kind of inspiring. Robert has, uh, well, I don't know, it sort of, it, it literally changed my life. I, transformed the business. It grew quite dramatically. I took on a leadership team. Um, I, I had some spare time. I started learning NLP, became an NLP trainer. And then Robert finally offered me a job about 10 years ago. So there we are. It's a sort of strange story. But I think that, you know, Robert's contribution towards organizations, not just business, but any organization that could be obviously health or government or NGOs or, or any kind of organizational work is, is phenomenal. There's your you model consultants at AT Kearney. You're, um, you've, you modeled various entrepreneurs uh, in success factor modeling and other sort of high performing people. And I, I don't know, I think you've made a huge contribution. To me, the Disney process is better than SWOT. It opens up creativity and it's used. I mean, I've trained people to do um, the Disney in like big chemical companies, they use it instead of SWAT. Disney themselves use your Disney process. Um, <laughs> you know, so, you know, you have a, an amazing background. Um, and so I'm sorry, I sort of can keep blowing your horn, but t tell us a little bit about yourself, apart from the NLP, which we, we know some of us might know about. Well, yeah, I think, first of all, thank you, Robbie. And it's been, it, it has been a really great journey together with you. Uh, it's, and, and over many different, you know, avenues. I can remember us meeting in, in Paris too, uh, close to 20 years ago. And uh, so, so we've had a, a nice, a long, and, and I think very fruitful uh, uh, journey together. So, uh, you know, and, and as you say, of course, I've been involved in NLP since it got started way back in, um, 19, 19 early 1970s um from a from the business perspective my first corporate client actually was apple in 1980 and went in and you know did consulting work for various parts of that organization um i've also done joint projects with uh, apple and lucas films so, you know I've, I've done a lot of you know one of probably one of my longest corporate clients was the Fiat Group, not just Fiat Auto, but the Fiat Group, where I remember for a while I was working with uh, 600 boards of directors um, and, you know, coming in and doing a lot on leadership. We actually, my brother John and I um, co-owned a company with uh, Fiat for a while that was all on consulting and leadership development. So for me, consulting of that kind, uh, you know, organizational and professional change has been as much a part of my background and my work as, uh, as personal change. Um, you know, one of the, remember one of the other very interesting things is as an example of something I did was for uh, Weight Watchers uh, back, you know, in the late nineties and they kind of redid their whole, um, their whole program based upon, you know, a comprehensive assessment I did for them. And, uh, you know, we built a whole uh, thing called the tools for living. So for me, um, yeah, consulting has, has definitely been a major part of my, my work. And I think that what we'll see with when we, as we go into generative consulting, it's a really good integration of personal change and professional change or, you know, individual change and organizational change. And I think that's probably one of the major contributions that it brings. Often consulting is about looking at, you know, spreadsheets and perk charts or, you know, Excel charts or something like that. Whereas we're really looking at the, you know, not only the 
the structure of the organization, but how um, people are part of that. One of my main mentors, in fact, and was a big part of my journey in consulting, was an Italian man named Gino Bonassoni, who was a strategy consultant for big uh, Italian companies. And I remember one of the things we, we were talking about, you know, how do you change organizations? And he said, well, you, you, don't, you, don't, you don't change organizations, you change people. You know, it's, it's, it's people that make organizations. So if you're talking about any kind of organizational change, it's, it's people change. So, uh, and I think that's kind of, you know, one of the things we emphasize in, um, in the generative consulting. So I don't know, that, that, that's a, a bit of, that. there's much more to say, but there's a bit of that background. I don't know if you have any other questions, Robbie, or I know you wanted to also. Yeah, well, not for now. I mean, I, I think you know, I'm gonna hand over for you to do your presentation. And then after your presentation, we'll have a sort of open Q&A session for about, you know, for about half an hour or so. And you'll, I, I know you said your presentation take about 20 minutes. But before Robert's presentation, we say in England or in America, there's no such thing as a free lunch. So <laughs> no such thing as a free Zoom because we're gonna tell you what we're selling up front. I mean, part of the reason for doing that, can you see this slide all right, everyone? Yeah, yes. for some reason I'm not running my slideshow very well, but I think I can do that. And there we are. So welcome to Generative Consulting. Um, and if you don't manage to spend the whole hour and you're wondering, uh, you'd like to get a discount for Robert's program, here it is. Uh, you get 100% off if you- 100 book. pounds off. <laughs> 100 pounds off, that's it. 100% off is, is, is never good. Uh, not if you're trying to make a profit or even break even. But uh, 100 pounds off, thank you, Robert. Book before the 1st of March. Uh, it's um, online, so you can see Robert anywhere in the world, but it is UK timing. So obviously, if you're in Australia, it could be a bit of a stretch. Or you can come and see him live in person at Regents University uh, in lovely Regents Park in London, April, the uh, spring or sprung. And um, it's a hybrid training. If you use the code Robert23 in the promotional box at the checkout, uh, that's it. And uh, you'll find a link um, on our website, uh, NLP School, to this April program. But apart from that, I'm now going to stop share, um, disappear altogether, and hand over to you, Robert, the main attraction. The main attraction. Thank you, Robbie. So yeah, so what I, as Robbie was saying, what I thought I would do just to kind of is, is lay out the basics of what uh, generative consulting is about and what we'll be doing in the program, the three days. And then we have time for questions because um, I think that's often the most uh, interesting part for all of us, certainly for me. Uh, so uh, just to, I'm gonna now go to my screen for just a moment and we have, um, this idea of, of generative consulting. And so there's a uh, first important thing to say is that this was something was collectively developed by myself and my success factor modeling leadership team uh, mate members. So Elizabeth Falcone, Mickey Feher, Colette Normandou, Jean-Francois Thierry and uh, Catherine Wyss. Um, and who, and who are all also NLP trainers and also consultants themselves. And, you know, we uh, we wanted to basically uh, come up with, a, you know, a record, a, a way of sharing what we do as consultants. And so there is a there is a book out about this uh, titled Generative Consulting, the subtitle, which I think says something too about the what the what the process and the program is about. Tools for consciousness, creativity, and collective transformation. So consciousness, creativity, and collective transformation. And I think those are, are three really important aspects of what uh, generative consulting is. Um, its roots are in success factor modeling. Robbie mentioned that before. Uh, success factor modeling is a, a, a process that I developed with my late brother, John. Um, and it has three basic areas, and there's three volumes here, as you see. Uh, one is on what we call next generation entrepreneurs, which is about living your dreams and making a better world through your business. So that's what we call next generation entrepreneurs. There's also a big part of the success factor modeling work was around what we call generative collaboration, 
which is about releasing the creative power of collective intelligence. And then a third area is conscious leadership and resilience, which is about orchestrating innovation and fitness for the future. So this is sort of the background. And, and as we'll see, these, these play an important role in the generative consulting process because they're all about um, how do we bring uh, change into an organization? How do we take an or individuals and organizations to a next level of performance? So, um, so that's kind of the background. And then the generative consulting, as we say, is, is a book that is about how we use those different uh, aspects of organizational change in, in uh, consulting work. The basic components of success factor modeling. Uh, so, what do we what do we model when we're doing success factor modeling? Well, the key to it is mindset. Uh, again, as I said, a lot of times when you look at consultants or what consultants do, they're going to come out with some kind of you know spreadsheets or whatever, kind of starting with you know these these kind of uh, technical aspects of change. We start with mindset because you know we say that the way that people think produces their actions. And those actions are what create the ultimate outcomes that we're looking for. And so success factor modeling tends to focus on you know five categories of outcomes, we could say, five areas of outcomes. One is uh, you know personal satisfaction in what we're doing. Uh, that's extremely important. Uh, satisfaction of, of team members, satisfaction of customers. Um, second is contribution, you know, making a positive difference. Uh, you know, I think all of us, we know that ourselves and in our professional lives, we want to somehow contribute to make a difference for others, regardless of what industry we're in. Innovation is key, and of course, that's ever more important in today's world. And then, of course, profitability, you know, that's one of the often a, a main goals to have some kind of financial stability, financial, you know, uh, uh, robustness. And then, and then growth uh, to grow, to scale. So these are the kinds of areas that are typically the types of goals that our organizations are going to be looking at. And as we say, then, either to achieve those goals, there have to be actions taken, but to take those actions, it starts with mindset. So um, now in the uh, generative consulting work, there is an overlap with coaching, you know, so you know that um, a lot of uh, the work that I do also in business is, involves coaching, sometimes coaching a top manager, uh, coaching different people who are in the company or teams. Um, and so what is the connection between, you know, uh, coaching and consulting? So many of us who've learned NLP, you know, are, are very familiar with the whole notion of coaching where you're working with an individual, um, you're focusing on personal development, a lot of it's about questioning. Um, consulting is kind of a complement to that. It's about organizational development. So it's rather than focusing on the individuals, focusing on the organization and typically involves not only asking questions, but also giving advice, so advising. And uh, so this is a big part of generative consulting is a, an integration in some ways of coaching and consulting, because the, as it says there, the sort of ultimate connection between these is some kind of empowerment. Now, in along with this then, in generative consulting and in success factor modeling, we see that when we look at an organization, we see what you could say as a whole on, and whole on is a term uh, that was made up some years ago, um, uh, that is essentially means that everything in the world is, is a whole line, meaning that it is a whole in and of itself, uh, but it is made up of other holes and part of bigger holes. And, you know, even an atom is a whole line. It's made up of other things. It's part of bigger things. Uh, a, a human, uh, clearly, as this uh, image from one of my books is showing, 
human is made up of different parts. We've got, you know, a brain, a heart, a belly. Those are made up of cells or tissues. The tissues are made of cells. The cells are made of molecules, etc. But we're also part of successively bigger wholes, part of a family system, a professional community, a culture, you know, a, a planet, uh, ultimately. And when we look at something from the um, uh, generative consulting perspective, we're always perceiving it as a, as a whole on. And one of the biggest challenges in working with people and organizations is that we often uh, don't see the whole on or the, and the holearchy. The holearchy means all of the different levels. And, and what we're always trying to keep in mind in generative consulting is that when you're, when you're working with one part of a whole on, you're impacting the others as well. You know, we see this happening today in, in many businesses where on the one hand, you might have a successful business, but you know, the people are burning out and maybe it's doing something damaging to the environment. So we're really wanting to have this, we, this uh, NLP you know, talks about a principle of ecology and that comes from this perspective of whole on. So now what do we mean by generative? So uh, generative consulting is, is not just any kind of consulting. Generativity generally means to create something. When you're generative, you're creative in a particular way, usually meaning that you've got to create a result that has not existed before, or sometimes you have to get the same result, but doing it in a completely different way than has ever been done before. So change brings about both of the, the need for both of these. So, you know, we are working with our clients as generative consultants to help create something new and evolutionary. Um, and we have this, you know, Einstein is considered a, a genius. He did things generatively. And we see that picture there shows that it's not, um, you, to be creative, um, you've got to have uh, more than just uh, knowledge. Uh, it's, as he says, it's intelligence having fun. So in some ways, that's also a, a big part of what we're doing with generative consulting. In fact, major, major foundation of generative consulting is the use of multiple intelligences in order to you know, gather information, in order to create plans, in order to implement things. Um, there's a, again, uh, one of the big challenges often is that in the corporate environments, in organizational environments, it's primarily you know, one intelligence that is used, a rational, logical, verbal, verbally based intelligence. And unfortunately, well, I, well I mean, I, I'm, I'm very much love the verbal uh, intelligence. Uh, I think I've just finished publishing my 30th or 31st book, so I have no problem with words. However, I know that they're incredibly limited. Uh, so in my own life, in my own work, I would never just limit myself to a kind of cognitive, linear, rational, verbal way of doing things. Uh, NLP already teaches that we have multiple representational systems and that they each bring uh, different you know, input and they're, diff they're different kinds of filters. So in fact, when we do our work with generative consulting, we are using not only words, but imagery, uh, you know, the kinesthetic sense. There's of course emotional intelligence, but there's also what we would call the somatic intelligence, which comes a lot through actual physical movement. Uh, there's a whole metaphoric intelligence, what's known as, as, as abductive reasoning or lateral thinking, and then collective intelligence. So really being able to bring in multiple perspectives and, and uh, you know, uh, uh, and, and you know, perceptual positions. So, so this is something that we will be working with in the course in those three days. We'll be showing, well, how do we go about activating and involving these multiple intelligences in a, uh, in what, as we're looking at some kind of professional or organizational change. So in fact, 
is we take this idea of, of Hoan and an ecosystem. Basically, when we look at something through a consultant's view, and, and I guess I want to say something that this program is certainly something that people who are already professional consultants will benefit from. But if you're not a consultant, uh, you know, if you're if, if you're somebody working inside of an organization, we're 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 taking a kind of a consulting perspective, meaning what we want to do is look at things as a consultant would look at them. So it's not a I want to make it clear it's it's not a basic consultant training. You can be a consultant or not. You will learn things that will help to be a, a better consultant or to move into that direction. Uh, but it's really um, about looking at something as a generative consultant would. And so this is showing that we sort of start with looking at that, the, the what's happening in the ecosystem. You know, what in, in our world today, there's so many different things happening. We're just coming through a pandemic. There's war in certain parts of the world. Uh, there is great technical changes. There is, in, right now, I know in, um, I'm in Paris right now, but in Santa Cruz, uh, where I'll be next week, there are big storms, uh, you know, so there's all kinds of things that affect our, our bigger ecosystem. In, a, in an organization, you've got the state of the economy, you've got the, the whatever market you're in and the evolution, but also the life cycle of the, of the company or organization. And that triggers, the state of that triggers actions and responses that need to be taken. So sometimes it's a time of growth. Sometimes it's a time of surviving crisis. Sometimes it's a time of just managing transition or change. Uh, and in fact, we would say, these are the three primary areas where generativity is necessary. The idea of generative consulting means I can't just keep doing what we've always been doing. We've got to do something new. We've got to do something differently than we have before. And that kind of brings us to the inside here, which is how do we how do we respond to these? And this is where I was saying those three areas of success factor modeling become very relevant. Some sort of entrepreneurial mindset, some sort of leadership mindset, some sort of collective intelligence. So now, what is the methodology? When in the program, we're going to be going over this, this fundamental methodology. So you've got uh, some principles and premises of generative consulting. The key that, and, and a lot of what this, uh, this three days is will be organized around are the seven steps, the seven steps of generative consulting. So uh, we'll, and we'll go over those in just a moment. And then there's nine core competences which support those steps. And then, as we've mentioned, there's the three kind of basic models from success factor modeling, next generation entrepreneurship, collective intelligence, conscious leadership. And so part of what we're doing and, and, and what the seven steps allow us to do is to do some kind of diagnosing of a situation. Uh, you know, what, what's the, what, needs, what needs to shift, what is happening, what needs to shift. And of course, decision making. So, what do you do based on that diagnosis? And then, performance. You know, there's planning and tracking where you have uh, various types of performance indicators. And so, that's what these these models will give us is some ways to be able to do that. So, so that's the kind of this overall framework of what we'll be looking at. Now, we said we you know we start with these seven steps. And in these seven steps are, are encapsulated in what we call the diamond model. And um, the diamond model is, a, is an acronym for those seven steps. So the, the, you know, the, the first D is about uh, defining the present state. The I is intention setting. The A of the diamond is action planning. The M of the diamond is moving to action. The O is about obstacles and obstacle transforming. The next end, the end, then the diamond is noting progress, this idea of tracking. And then the final D is deepening the changes. Now, we also like this idea of diamond and you see it's, these are, we consider these to be like facets of a diamond rather than uh, a, a linear, just a linear set of steps because sometimes 
you're doing multiple cycles. Now, as we said, these are supported by nine competences, which include things like systemic thinking, uh, strategic thinking, pattern detection, influencing skills, emotional intelligence, relational skills, facilitating facilitation skills, presentation skills, communication skills. Now, I, I, I need to say, you know, that's a lot, a lot to cover. We will touch upon these. This introduction or this kind of foundation program that we're doing is, uh, is, is uh, actually the kind of a, a summary of a much longer certification program that we do. And so it's, a, in fact, it's kind of a springboard into that. So we actually designed originally a whole, um, like a nine day certification. So this is, we're going to not be able to cover all of those competences, but I think it will be interesting to uh, certainly we'll get a, a flavor for them. And then, as we said, there is the three basic areas that we'll be kind of uh, integrating in as we go through. So, so once again, you know, our our main approach is going to be going through uh, these seven steps. And what we usually like to do is to say you'll uh, we invite people to bring their own cases uh could be your own sometimes people are coming with their own organizations issues <laughs> other times you know you might have a your own client uh that you know you're working with and you want to sort of get some ideas uh certainly what we found is that there is a lot of um similarities between many kinds of organizational issues so there's always a lot to learn, even when we are focusing on somebody else's challenge. And that's, of course, part of what we do as a consultant is to um, look at, we're, we're supporting somebody else to, you know, make changes. So um, the just kind of primary model we'll be using for, especially for the first few steps there, um, the diagnostic phase, the setting intention, and the action planning is what's known in NLP as the score model. So looking at what are some of the symptoms of a particular, you know, organizational challenge. Oh, uh, you know, but it's either of a team, it could be for a project, it could be for a whole organizational uh, whole organization or some part of that organization. We'll be looking at what are some of the causes uh, responsible for that? What are the goals? What is it that we want to do instead? What sort of resources can be activated? And then what will be the uh, effects of, of doing that? So um, as we said, you know, these various uh, contexts that require change, we tend to support with different ones of the models. So with the stimulating growth is what we call the circle of success. So we'll have an introduction to that. Um, uh, surviving crisis usually requires some kind of leadership and there's the SFM leadership model. And then managing transition often really uh, emphasizes a collective intelligence. So we'll be kind of bringing all these things together in these uh, three days to see how we might go about, um, uh, you know, solving a particular situation or issue. So that's kind of a, that's the, the big picture. Um, and I just want to say a couple of other things before we go to our questions, which is, so that's the contents. Now, how do we do that in the three days? We will have, um, you know, it, we, this is, it's, it's intended like all workshops to be experiential. And the way that we'll do that is kind of walking through those steps. We usually do a couple of steps a day and we'll be kind of following a whole, you know, a project or, or a particular issues. And I will of course be doing demos of these different steps and how they would, uh, how we would work with that, with a particular, you know, we'll, we'll be having people come up with their own uh, challenges. Then, you know, we will be going into breakouts where sometimes we'll be in pairs. Most of the time, we're gonna be doing this in, in groups uh, because I think that's where you often get the, the most um, richness in this. So uh, we like to say it can be useful uh, for people to you know, comment. Sometimes you'll be working with 
Um, the same group, sometimes people will come already with a group from within their own company and can be really interesting to do these exercises with your own uh, teams or groups. It can also be interesting then to um, uh, get other perspectives as well. So we'll, we'll be again uh, going over some of these principles of collective intelligence and giving some uh, you know, experiences of them during the class time as well. So I think that's kind of the, the, the sort of the basics. Uh, there's more to say, but I think it's probably more interesting and maybe more relevant to see which types of questions that you might have. You can, you can put them in the chat or you can um, mechanically raise your hand. I probably most of us know how to do that by now on, on uh, uh, Zoom. And I don't know, and Robbie, maybe you, maybe you want to start. I don't know if you, maybe you have questions to begin with, or let's see how we want to go about doing this. Yeah, well, we have David who's just put his hand up. So maybe we'll just start with you. Uh, let's, let's jump right in with David then. Yeah. Go ahead. You need maybe to... you're muted, unfortunately. We can't hear you. Oh, how's that? <laughs> That's yeah, better. Thanks. Great. Right. Okay. Lovely to see you again. And thank yes, you so much for your um, insights over the years. Much appreciated. Um, back in 2000, I was going through some real fog um, and some really horrible uncertainty. Um, and you gave some magic words for something <laughs> along the lines of um, those who hold the space of uncertainty. Um, who can hold a space of uncertainty, come out the other end, can produce the most amazing things. And those words have never left me. So thank you for that. You're um, welcome. How since, and again, early 2000s, where are we, 2023? Yeah. Has your, has your work kind of developed that concept, really? I'm really fascinated because we right. live in great times of uncertainty now. Yes, yeah. yes. Thank you. Thanks, David. That's a great question. And, and as you say, you know, in fact, it's uncertainty, these, these uncertainties are what most require generativity, because when you're uncertain, you can't just do, you, you know, there's, a, there's an old thing that says, you know, ready, aim, fire. Well, when it's uncertain, you don't even know where to aim. Yeah. So actually, with, uh, in the generative approach, and this, this is especially, uh, I think, very relevant with uh, the question about uncertainty, the, the key is what we would call emergence, you know, so emergence means I'm, I'm holding, like you say, I'm holding these pieces together and then something will come out that is un, usually emergence is something that's unpredictable, right. unexpected, uh, and, and it's usually new, you know, you, you can't, you can't know in the beginning what it's going to be. Right. So uh, a lot of the collective intelligence work is around emergence. And we say the three things that create that we have, you know, we have resonance and then synergy and then emergence comes from that. But you've got to hold it in the right field. And I think right. this has probably been one of the major, you know, sort of um, developments in the last 20 something years, David, is, right. yeah. How do we create the conditions within a field to be able to hold this, these, all these different dimensions right. in a place of uncertainty so that something good can come out? Okay. And I think that's kind of the idea of hold on. You know, do we, do we have the pieces that we need? So, yeah, that, I think having, you know, some of, you know, what are, what, what are the conditions and what is the mindset that's necessary to be able to do that? Right. And we'll certainly be addressing some of those things. So, okay, thank yeah. you. Thank You're you. welcome. Good question, and thank it's good you. to see you. Thank you. I see Sanjeev is next, and he. I... I... Uh, you're you're muted, Sanjeev. I don't know how you got muted suddenly, but you are. Just a moment. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Uh, hi, Robert. Hi. Uh, Robbie and everybody else. Uh, well, uh, quite honored to be. Uh, attending this and uh, a lot of wisdom in terms of the entire process of generative um, consulting. Um, quite keen to know about the extended nine day certification uh, that you did mention. Now, is that yeah. a standalone? Is this kind of a step up 
forced to attend that or yes. uh, would Th that be thank an you for, thing? Yeah. yeah, thank you for asking that, Sanjeev. Uh, what we are, we are planning to to do sometime, you know, we, we you know, we will be doing uh, the, these certification programs. My leadership team and I would be planning to do one probably at some point, at least online, where this would qualify for the first, there's the nine days are usually in several modules, and this would qualify for the first module. And then, you know, we, I don't know, we, you know, we'll be certainly be following up too with NLP school. Maybe we'll do something there, but certainly uh, there will be a, at uh, some point in the next year, we'll be announcing a, um, a, the whole certification. And that will either be, you know, virtual or, or a hybrid somewhere. And this would be uh, the first, this would, this would qualify for the first module. And so, in that course, you know, you could start in the second module, or usually we'll probably give people a big discount if they want to retake that first module because that can be interesting as well. But yeah, that's so that's how it fits in with that. Okay, I, I I'm calling from India. I'm from India, so uh, certainly yeah. look forward to uh, have it online. Yeah, or, you know, Wh whichever course, way we helps. do it, even if we do it physically, it's like this. It will will be hybrid. So that you'll be able to attend online. And I'm, <laughs> I Thank was you. looking forward to having you there. Thank you. Another question. You yeah. did mention about a book uh, in which you've uh, spoken yes. about generative. Well, which, well, I, I, I missed out the name of the book. It's, it's called Generative Consulting. Is the okay. Okay. And it's, and it's yeah. on, you can get it on Amazon and it's in Kindle Perfect. as well. So. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Sanjeev. All right. I see we have our next question is... Docs, and you're muted too. Still, dogs, you're you're muted. Hello. Yes. No, Hi, Robert. Know. Thank you. Hi. Thank you. Uh, it's a uh, it's an honor seeing you. I'm a huge fan of your book, Next Generation Entrepreneurs. <laughs> uh, it it did help me a lot to get there mentally, so I'm not get physically. Uh, so yeah. mentally, I'm all over there. So it's a good yeah. thing. Uh, like the question is, um. How do you balance your heart and mind yeah. when it comes to making decisions? For yeah. me, uh, for majority of life, I made uh, decisions with my heart. I didn't forget okay. to take my mind with right. me. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that ended up in a uh, in a situ indefinitely in bad financial situation. So I just want right. to know how can you manage those two sides: your heart, mind, and even the gut. Because yeah. When your situation, you're everywhere. So how do you manage that? Yeah. Well, you know, you know, Robbie was mentioning something at the beginning here, Doug, that where he's talked about the Disney process, where you have dreamer, realist, critic, and a lot of times the way I would do this and, and invite you to think about it is, you you kind of are going to dream. I want to sort of dream from the heart, and then I've got a plan from the head, and then the critic is going to be from the gut. So you know, is is everything right in the right place? So what often happens when we make decisions, if you make simply decision as a dreamer, that's usually, <laughs> it's, it's usually not going to go very far or, or there'll be some very predictable problems. Even if you make just a decision as a realist, that can also, you know, there's, sometimes things get left out. So that's why we say you've got to get through that, that critic process. And this is where multiple intelligences come in because our heart is great. It's a really important team member. It's where our passion comes from. You know, it's where a lot of our energy comes from. It's our emotional intelligence. But we need the, the other intelligence as well. So uh, one of the things we'd say is kind of making sure that when you're in that process, you want to be able to dream and dream big. You know, one of the, I think one of the problems people have is they don't dream big. You know, they keep themselves small, they dream small. So you want to dream big and you want to dream from your heart. But then you've got to go to that next process, which is, okay, now I'm, I'm going to need to do some kind of planning. I need to go into the realist. And then ultimately that critic where I've got to ask some of those tough critic questions, you know, what's missing? Is everything there? What could go wrong? <laughs> we know in these times of uncertainty, things can happen that we don't, we can't predict or you know plan for. So we've got to be ready. That that's kind of what this idea of fitness for the future means. I 
I, 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 you know, things will are not going to necessarily go the way that I thought they were going to go. So I've got to be ready. So I would say those would be some tips is, is uh, kind of making sure that you, you don't, you don't want to abandon your heart for sure, but you want to bring in some of these other team members and make sure that you've got a good decision-making process. Okay. Uh, thank you. That was uh, very, very helpful. Uh, Thanks. Yeah, it's yeah. good. Uh, thank you for your books. I appreciate it. I'm a huge fan <laughs> of your books. You're welcome, Doug. Thank you. I wanted to add something which was a quote which I took from you, Robert, um, which was a master plays to his or her weaknesses. Yes. So I, I just wanted to sort of add that in, you know, because I've always found that a very kind of inspiring idea is that yeah. at some level we all have, you know, as you've just said, Dax, you know, you have the gift of being able to make decisions according to your heart. So that's something is maybe your strength, but then, you know, you could learn to play to your weaknesses. And I think that that's, you know, always a big tip in business is how do you kind of identify what is your sort of the one you don't like to go to so much and, and make it doesn't have to be brilliant, but make it just a little bit stronger. So sorry. Yeah. No, I, I think that's great, Ravi. And you know what? I think the, the important one of the important points you're making too, for, that dogs is that usually what I see happening in business is that people leave the heart out. So you, dogs, you got a good start at least, <laughs> you know. So, so don't give up. You know, stay with it, and I'm sure you'll find your way. Uh, yeah, I know. Um, definitely, sometimes life shows me good lessons. You know, um, so it's good yeah. you started at the moment starting from scratch, which is great. Um, which is good. Yeah, yeah, I was, it's good. Yeah. Um, thank you for the tip. I appreciate You're it. You're welcome. You're welcome. By the way, this is also why we say that coaching and consulting go together because you can see in Doug's case, he's maybe he's, he's trying to start his business, but there's also that kind of personal decision-making that happens. So you've got, you've got that interface between the two. So Sukru. Hi. Hi. Fantastic to meet the legend again, uh, sure. Robert. I'm reading your books. And I'm joining you guys from Istanbul. Ah, uh, thank, I want to thank the NLP school, you know, fantastic opportunity, Ravi and Caroline. And I am NLP master, but at the same time, I do keenly um, trying to find a way to make NLP <laughs> science. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. I have a personal question about NLP, yes. you know, sure. like when are we going to make NLP acceptable scientifically yeah this is the yeah. first question the second question sorry robert yeah, go ahead yeah yeah yeah. the second question is like i think we need an nlp university which you which you have in yeah. california yeah. so what is the way to make your university i mean do you have a vision do you have a plan because all we talk about generative plans yeah like the you know um, disney model having target timeline we know all the tools what is your plan for nlp university do you have any sure sure yes so so thank you for a great question you're welcome first one first one is you know it's it's an interesting challenge because nlp is a science it's you know we say it's the study of the structure of subjective experience that's the bit where you start running into the problem with typical science exactly. typical science doesn't care about subjective experience only objective things that you can measure so you've got this really kind of challenging dynamic there because something can change you know somebody can say my life has changed and somebody goes you know show me the you know let me measure it what what, what exactly changed that what well, you can't just you can't just say that you know when, when you're working with mindset it's really tricky to measure i you know i for the, one of the very first things that i did back in 1976 was a study of eye movements and brain waves and it's in one of my books but you know what is that 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 doesn't really you know there's there's different kinds of science and different kinds of studies there's so called outcome studies and we've done outcome mm -hmm. studies like with things like the spelling strategy stuff like that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. now big question though Sukru, it might be how do you you know how do you scientifically test the disney strategy it's so there's so much going on it's really tricky and and frankly that's where the limits of a lot of you know science comes in is they can't really measure the stuff that's really making the difference you can you you know we've had the allergy technique that i developed that's been researched that you can show that if you follow this procedure you're going to get certain results but from a generative perspective 
I don't want to, you know, that's, that, there's so much more that you need to be able to do. And like, for example, in guiding a company to reinvent itself. Mm -hmm. So I think it's less about science per se than about credibility, if you will. And I think credibility comes from not so, you know, how do I say this? Looking at, at the relationship between processes and outcomes. Mm -hmm. So now we ask, what is our, our vision for NLP University? So right now, um, you know, we, we are definitely have been building a, um, our, our practitioner, master practitioner, trainer, and then this year, our master trainer. Are, we have, uh, I've, I've recorded for each of these classes more than 30 uh, video master classes. So, you know, mm -hmm. uh, on all these different topics. So we have, an, we have a dashboard where we have, uh, we have a graphic facilitation. We have, um, we have these things transcribed so they can be immediately um, translated into multiple languages. So our goal is that we want that to be a foundation, a solid foundation for what is a practitioner, master practitioner, or trainer, you know, over the world, we're not saying we're the best or we're the only one, but it's at least a solid foundation so that you know, like, like if you have a Stanford University or an Oxford University, you know, okay, this is a, a fun, you know, here's the fundamentals mm -hmm. because, and it's, you know, and it's not like the, the three day, you know, you know, mm -hmm. uh, three day course or something. So we've been putting together protocols for what we think are going to be, you know, the, the best ways to you know, communicate and teach these things. And then we have an affiliate program. You know, Robbie is, as you know, is one of mm -hmm. our yes. trainers, one of our master trainers. And so we want to be, you know, we want to basically set a, um, a, a, a reference point for what mm -hmm. NMP can be. Mm -hmm. yeah. so I, can, I have, if I can just interrupt you a moment, uh, because yeah, sure. I just want to add one thing that Robert, over the past three years, you've added in ninety videos. It's amazing. I said you've 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 outputted more than Steve, Steven Spielberg in his entire career. <laughs> but, but I mean, my slight concern is we do have four more questions, um, and yeah. slightly out of time. So, uh, is that okay? Do you have any final questions you need you would like to ask? Um, I I had just one addition. You know, I think. Um, in your university, um, in any NLP university, if you bring all the science, science together and, yeah. and teach students from neurology to behavioral therapy or, you know, psychotherapy, some sessions, you know, like different kind of, I think, practices would add a lot of value to the university that uh, I love to join. <laughs> you know, so, just think. I would, what I would just say, Sire, is that when we started, we started with this idea of a hand where we said, you've got the mm -hmm. thumb, which is the basic practices. And then you have, you have things like, you know, uh, personal change, coaching. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think, I think NLP is not psychotherapy and should not be considered it's not, psychotherapy, yes. uh -huh. but, you know, coaching, personal development, we had leadership, we had creativity and we had education. So, uh, and, and so the personal development included health. So we were thinking these are sort of the three departments and we do bring in uh, teachings oh, from right. all of those areas. And as you, if you've seen our online encyclopedia, you'll know that we really, in that encyclopedia, we're acknowledging the backgrounds of where, you know, cognitive science and other places that have contributed. So I know okay, we got to go on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Good you. question. Thank you. Phil. Phil. Robert, I, I, hello. Hi. <laughs> Good, good to be here. Um, it sounds like you can hear me. So firstly, <laughs> echoing everyone else's thoughts, Robert, thank you for everything. In particular, the Disney technique is something I've used on myself, I think every year since Robbie <laughs> taught me about 10 years ago. Um, to my question, or maybe questions, your presentation was really interesting, but there was a lot of information on it. Yeah. And so my question is grounded firstly at the course in April, and then yeah. maybe there's a secondary follow-up question. Right the larger course right it seems that there is a kind of a mixture of things going on on the one hand there is is it the score and diamond that speak to diagnosing the issue in an organization and forming a kind of roadmap towards well-defined success exactly so for that it seems that that's pitched at the consultant who could be degrees of hands off yes and at the same time there are the nine competencies. There's the SFM, 
models, models right. that seem to be more grounded in skills and competencies for leaders and even top tier managers that to me that speaks a bit more to the facilitator the person that goes into the business and mm. is the one driving behavioral change of individuals right so i don't know if that if that kind of makes sense but then yeah, that leads yeah. To the question. No, that's great that's great phil yeah the course in april is it more oriented towards the diagnostic taking the organization quite meta or is it grounded more towards the behaviors and the facilitation of skills of leadership? And then is there a different answer to the bigger course? So, so the, actually what we're doing is it's not one or the other. You're, we're going to be doing that, right? So we're saying, right. okay, what you got to do as a consultant, especially as you go around that diamond model, you know, maybe the D is it's more diagnostic. But then when you start doing action planning and moving into action, you've got to bring in those others. Yeah. So that's a big part of what we'll be doing is actually how do you bring those two things together? Because, yeah, you need to kind of jump out, look at the system. This is the idea of the whole on, right? But then you've got to, you know, you've got to bring your focus back to some part of that whole on and you actually produce some kind of action, some kind of actionable change. So it's about how do you how do you dance between those two? Now, what we'll be doing is, is, a, is you know, uh, we'll be any one of those models you could spend the whole three days with. I mean, so we're going to be, it's, it's think of it more as a bit of a survey of the whole thing. Yeah. We will be walking through those steps. People will be, you know, hopefully coming out of that program with some ideas of how to go about actioning. Now, you know, typically, you know, in any kind of an intervention, you're going to follow up. And when we, that's why we do the course and modules so that you can actually then say, all right, we tried this, what happened? Now we corrected that, what happened? So the longer course just allows us to go more in depth with all of that. Okay, cool. That's okay. Useful. Thank you very much. Good, good question. Thank you. I, I like the way you organize that too. <laughs> Thanks, Phil. Okay, I think we have Anna next. Hello. Uh, Robert, very nice uh, to meet you. Hello Hi. to everybody nice from to Tenerife, you. from Spain. Um, uh, I have a question. I was uh, really interested before in the course which you are doing, uh, the, which called, I think, Generative Coaching with Stephen yes. Gilligan. Yes. Uh, could you shortly just tell me, like, what is the difference? Like, yeah. uh, is it like other ways? Uh, because I'm, I was interested, like, in both. Just yeah. understand where to focus on right now. Sure, that's a that's a really important question because you know generative coaching, generative consulting. You know they they have they have both have the name. They're both of generative, and they're both about supporting change. So the big difference is that in so in generative coaching, which by the way I just uh, the volume three of that uh, book series with Stephen Gilligan just came out. So uh, it's, uh, it's about obviously supporting individuals. You can use it with teams. It has a six step coaching process. Um, and, and so it's, it's specifically looking at, uh, you know, how do we help individuals change? Then generative consulting is, as we said, there is some coaching in it, but the view is looking at more of the, what we're calling the whole on. So this individual needs, they want something or need to change, but that means that they're in the context of an, a, a larger group, a larger organization. And the goals are, are not going to be just personal goals. So usually when we're doing coaching, it's what, you know, where our question is, well, what do you want? What do you want to create more in your life? That's the generative coaching question. You can't just say that in consulting because you've got a whole organization and you and I was showing you those those outcomes. There's those typical outcomes that you're going to try to reach, like you know, like like uh, Dogs was saying, ah, oh, you know, I I have all these great dreams, but I'm not I'm not I don't have enough money. I need to be profitable, so I've got to create a a way of working that I'm going to be able to make money. Well, now that's going to be more uh, from an from a business perspective than just a personal perspective. Now, like he was saying, I've got to also change my decision making on a personal level to support that business level. But that's kind of what you're always doing in consulting is looking at that interaction between personal and then this bigger picture. So that's one of the big differences. 
Yeah, sorry to interrupt you, but unfortunately we, we, we're about to end in about a minute. So I think, <laughs> I mean, we, we, we do have one other question. So, I mean, if you yeah. have a couple more minutes, Rob, let's, a bit let's fit in this last question, but thank you for that, Anna. That, thank that's you, a thank you. Question. Let me just squeeze in the last slide, just so for those of you who didn't see it at the beginning, is that for this talk, there's a hundred pounds off, which is, I don't know, 110 euros or something, uh, or $20 or whatever. Uh, if you use Robert23 in the promotional box, this is for the uh, course in April on our website, NLP School. Caroline will no doubt send you an email with a link for all that, but uh, if you book before the 1st of March, and it's live in London and also hybrid Zoom. Um, and anyway, so we have one last question. So the last but not least is going to be, yes, hi, Francis. And thank you, Anna. Sorry for cutting you short there. Go ahead, Francis. Yeah. Th thank you so much. Um... Yeah, I'll make it very quick. Um, necessary, the generative consulting ideas, what's more of a, a promoter, developer, and innovator, more of bubbling with ideas. You know, the disruption helped me to know uh, move from one level to another level. Yes. But uh, sustaining that momentum is a big challenge yes. because that is not my strength. I'm being yes. a, only a generator, but not able to organize and maintain that flow. You know, yes. this is what uh, the problem. Uh, yes. Can, yeah, so so uh, two things. Uh, thank you. It's a great question. This is why there's the last D in the diamond model, right? So remember, we said that last D is about deepening practices. So you, you so you okay, you move into action, you transform the obstacles, but now you've got to do the noting progress, which means I've got to track it. But that last D is about deepening the changes. What is it that's necessary? What do you have to put into place? And this is literally practices that will help you to continue that, to sustain it and deepen it. The second thing I would say, and I, I haven't really said much about it yet, um, but the other key part of when we're doing our diagnoses and our, our resources, we're gonna be looking at this pyramid of different levels of change. Because if you just make a behavior change, it's it, it, and you don't support that with motivation, with values, and even with shift in things like identity, it's then, it's just a superficial change. So one of the other things we will be looking at is what are some of the, you know, the resources necessary to create a, you know, lasting and sustained change. And that's, again, that final D. And that's uh, about what practices do you do beyond the intervention? Does that make sense, Francis? Francis, did we lose you? <laughs> You might have frozen, but um, I think we I think we lost. Right? Anyway, uh, makes a lot of sense. I could take oh, okay. levels of learning and change. You know, you be beyond their identity. You said you no. Know, during that uh, presentation, yeah, I can connect with that. Thank you so much, uh, Robert. So make a lot of sense. Okay. okay. We, if you want to wrap up, Rob, um, thank you so much. Thank you, Caroline, yeah. for organizing all this. Yes. Thank you, thank you, everybody, for joining us. And okay. hopefully see you in April, either in London or on Zoom. We do a very good hybrid course with lots they, of. They do I? Yeah. That I can say, I know we've had practice with that. The hybrid works really yeah, well. Yeah, we, 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 we really go for it. So it, don't think that Zoom will be boring. It'll be great. But anyway, yeah. Robert, thank you. Uh, I don't know if you thank want to you, say Robbie. final words, um, but uh, goodbye from me and um, over to Robert. I, I, I think my final words are just, you know, this uh, whole idea of generative consulting is that it it is a mindset. Uh, it, it's about, you know, uh, looking to the future it's about using our imagination it's about you know not being afraid to dream and then to follow up with that so maybe i i just end with the you know we were talking about the walt disney before but one of my favorite walt disney quotes is you know if you if you can dream it you can do it and that's what generative consulting and generative coaching is all about is moving from that dream into to action so come and join us See you all. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you, Caroline. Thank you so Thank much. You. Yeah. Thanks Thank so you. much, Robert. Thank bye. you, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Everyone. Thank you for taking the time. Thank you. <laughs> mm -hmm.